Hey everyone, today we are going to go over how to design a custom feather flag. This tutorial is made for beginners, so if you know how to use Adobe Illustrator, this probably isn't going to help you much. Um, go to our medium, or uh, intermediate, or advanced tutorials. They'll be coming in the future if they are not already up. Um, other than that, let us get started. Okay, so first things first, let's go get the template. Um, go to featherflagnation.com, scroll to the very bottom. Bottom right, you'll see download our templates. Click on that. Right, and then just I'm using the 15 foot kit template. Choose the one that you're going to use uh, for your purchase. Um, this is the 15 foot kit is the most popular just because it matches our stock feather flag sizes. All right, let's go back to the template. Okay, so before we start anything, let's do one thing, something that's very crucial. Make sure your file is in CMYK color mode. Um, RGB, it's great. Colors look great. Everything's awesome about it. But unfortunately, commercial printing processes cannot use RGB colors. They have to be CMYK. Pantone colors are always great. Our machines do tend to match them the best. Just keep in mind, anything you see on your screen is probably not going to look exactly the same when you see it in person just because your monitor colors, actual print colors on the fabric, is it, they do vary a bit. So because of that, just remember, we cannot guarantee any color matching. Some of our clients are picky with their colors, so what we do is we just send them some swatches of different variations around the patent and color code that they provide us, and they typically just pick the one that's the closest and they use that. Okay, so let's go over the template. Uh, there's three main things here. There's the flag real estate where you design everything, is where your graphs, you know, your logos, your text, blade line, and then the sleeve color. Let's start with the easiest one. Sleeve color, it's either black or white. Um, so it really varies depending on design, uh, what you want to go with. Uh, we go, we let the client choose when they're checking out. They can choose black, they can choose white, uh, but those are only two colors that you can use for sleeves. So let me just show you how to make this white. Okay, click on the sleeve, which is just the layer right there. Just go on, just go on it. You'll see it. You see a little line around. Just click on it, and then go at the bottom left, right here. Make sure the top square is selected. If not, click on it. Okay, let's say the back one is selected. Just click on the top one and then hit the white button. Boom, you got yourself a white sleeve. Pretty easy. Okay, so let me change this back to black because because that's, I like black sleeves, they look a bit better. Okay, so we got that. So this is the bleed line. Uh, the bleed line is basically your cutoff line for anything you don't want clipped. Let me give you an example here. So let's just give the um, sale. Let me actually spread this out a little bit. It's a little too close here. Uh, I'll teach you about this a bit later. Okay, okay. So let's let me show you what is good and what is bad. Okay, so this is bad. So you, you're going to get your S clip. You're going to get your E clip. So you don't want to do that. Another thing a lot of clients do is they, they put it a little too close to the lines. Um, they, they like to make it right on top, and this this is just cutting you way too close. Um, you're just so close. Sometimes uh, the finisher will hem it a little extra, and your text will get slightly clipped. So what I recommend is just leave a little bit extra space. Pretty much like that, where you can see some visible, you know, space between the bleed line and the text. Okay, so let's get rid of this. All right, so let's get started now. Okay, so let's just pick a color for the flag. So you select the. Okay, so actually, totally forgot. So this is the left side. This is the right side of their template. And it's also the front or the back. So what they do is um, whatever you design here, and there, they're going to print it out. They're just gonna cut it all around, they're going to put the flags back to back, and they're going to just hem them all around and put the sleeve on it. So pretty much it's the front, it's the back, or this is the front, it's the back. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure if you're doing double side, you design both sides. If you're doing single side, either choose this side or this side. And just remember the sleeve side is the curved side. I mean, it is in this artwork. Some of the templates won't have it, but the sleeve and the pole does go on the curved side of the flag. Okay, so let's get started. In this one, I'm going to be doing a double-sided flag. We're just going to do different text on both sides. So let, let's just start out with some bright color for the background. Let's make this one. So click click on the body, go to the right, click a yellow or whatever color you want here. You can go all any color you like. So I'm going to go with the yellow. It's just a nice bright color. Let's click on the other side, make it yellow. Okay, so let's put some text now. So for text, um, you have a couple options. So I mean, you can do sale, like let's say you want to do it like this. You can put it this way, go transform, rotate 90 degrees, and just fit it to the body of the flag. Okay, so you can do that. Let me copy this over, and let me bring it back to where it was. Okay, so another option is, actually we don't need this. Okay, so another option is vertical. So you can go, hold down your mouse button on this tooltip, and then just go down and click on vertical type tool, 
click that, and then in this in this tool will just stack the letters for you. So sale, there we go. Okay, so click on this that we can move it around. That's just a little arrow pretty much. Okay. So then you stretch it out to fit the thing. So the another key tip is that when you're stretching stuff, don't don't just do this. Look, look how messy that looks. You're never gonna get the right proportions. So you'd want to hold on the shift button and then stretch it. So if you see, if you hold on shift, it is going to stretch it proportionally no matter how you move it. It's not going to let it go on proportionally. Okay, so let's put it in between the bleed lines. Another thing is, um, there's, there's some space between the text. Um, you can go this way. I don't like too much space. So what I do is if you hold on control, press T, you can get the character tool, the options coming up. Go on the bottom one for the Roku tool tip and just bring it down. So bring it down. I like that much space. That's a good amount. That way, you know, you can you can squeeze out a little bit more. Uh, you can squeeze out a little bit more here. Uh, we'll make, you know, I'm gonna do this a little bit proportionally here. There we go. That's fine. Let's uh, let's make it a little smaller. Okay, that's good right there. Okay. All right. So you have these two options. So typically, if you have a lot of text, you want to use uh, you want to use this method. Just because you you can't fit a lot of text top to bottom. Let me show you. So let's just let's just let's just say you're doing sale. Stop. Say this is something simple here. All right. So the more text you put, the more uh, empty space you're going to have on your flag. So just look right here. See, we, we just can't fit everything top to bottom by making text nice and big. So if you end up using a lot of text, you're going to have to do it this way. So scale, sale, stop, save. I'm going to do this on two lines just because it's going to look a little. Actually, well, let me show you on one line too. So I'll stop save. So put that there, do that. Okay. See, this, this is this is much more readable than this. I mean, of course, there's no spacing here, but to make this even better, you can put it on two lines. Close the gap a bit here. Okay. So in this case, I do sometimes do it unproportionally. It doesn't really make too much of a difference for text, but when it comes to logos for your clients, don't do it unproportionally. Always use the shift key. So you can do that. Let's change this back to sale. Okay, let's so hold down. Remember, I'm holding down shift when I'm doing this. So hold on shift and just go right there. All right. Perfect. So we're going to put sale on one side. Let's get rid of all the extra text and make life easier. We want to put, let's put a open on this side. Okay, perfect. All right. So as easy as that. So when you're done designing some, uh, designing your layout, one another key um, tip is to make sure you outline your text. This is very easy to do. Uh, click on the text, right click on it, and then go create outlines. So what this does is, let's just say I use some fancy font that you know a lot of people don't have, and I send that file over to a company to print. What happens if you're missing that text, uh, when they load that file in Illustrator, it's going to replace your font with the random font. So for example, this is Arial Black, and I send this over to a print shop, and they open it up, and it's not outlined. This Arial Black is going to get replaced with a random font. And it, trust me, there's going to be no font that's going to match what you used. It rarely doesn't match. So just it's easy. Click on it, right click, create outlines, boom, you're done. Okay? And then this looks great, but uh, so it's, the text is just not popping. So let's fix this a little bit. Let's make the text red, red and yellow. They, they work well together. I mean, it makes the text pop. Looks good, but uh, let's add a little extra. Let's add a shadow. A shadow typically does make your text pop. So what you want to do is just click on this layer. And well, let's do one at a time. Let's click on this, copy it over, and then paste it. And then let's make this black. This is going to be your shadow. So what I do is, that's the bottom. This is going to be the top. So what I like doing, I like creating an outline of the shadow color on my text. So easiest way is just go to the stroke, which is the bottom one, and hit the black button. All right, so you can see the stroke. It's not too strong, so let's make it a little bit stronger so it's easily visible. Uh, let's try four. four. Four looks good. Okay. So what I do now is I just place it on top, and you can figure out how you want. This is much better. A lot of people use like the they go to effects, they use weird stuff. Um, it, it just makes the file too large and too hard to work with. This looks great for large um, uh, text, pretty much. So let's just do the same thing. Other side, let's copy it, just make that black. Go to the bottom, make that black, and then one, two, three. Okay, boom. All right. Oops. Yeah, I did this always, always mix these up. Just always make sure you're on, like, this will be the main, this will be the stroke. So let's just put this on top. And apologies, I don't know the professional calls for all this. It's just what I use. 
Um, okay, it's perfect. So now you see it looks great. I love this design. The text pops, the colors are bright. It's easier to see from a distance. Um, when you're when you're driving anywhere, you see color, you see a flag this bright, you're going to be able to read open and sell. So that's very easy. So I'm done designing. I checked the bleed lines. It's okay if the black gets a little clipped. Doesn't matter. So but if you do care, just move it over slightly. There we go. Let's get rid of the bleed lines. There we go. We are done. Our design is now finished. So we got our front, we got our back, and our text are outlined. Everything looks great. I'm going to save this and okay, perfect. So in the future, we're going to cover how to use Pantone color codes, how to make, how to you know, how to make sure you're when you're using a company's logo, you're you're pulling their colors properly. Um, there are some discrepancies between Pantone color codes in uh, Adobe Illustrator and what you see online. So when it comes to matching colors, it's a bit difficult, but it can be done with either swatching or experience um, over time. Like for instance, uh, at Feather Flag Nation, we use specific colors for red, black, blues, and it's just trial and error over time to figure out what works best and how we can adjust some color codes to make them better match what you see in real life compared to your computer screen. So that's all for now. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to contact us. Um, if you want to purchase some custom feather flags, uh, you don't have to do the artwork yourself. We do the design services for free. So just go to our website. Uh, let me go there now. There's a design request button on top. Um, our menu is being updated, so it looks a little weird right now, but it, it'll be on the top somewhere here. Just click on design request, and then just, just fill everything out right here, and then fill everything out, and we'll get everything back to you usually within a couple hours it really depends on how busy you are something a little more complicated with live images uh, i can't take up to one business day but we try our best to get you designs as soon as possible and hey if you like this video and you want to learn more we'll continue getting more and more advanced in our videos uh, so over time you'll be professional at designing custom flags feather flags inflatable air dancers and all the other good stuff that we make um, if you like what you see click the subscribe link at the bottom and yeah share the video Thank you.